Um, a quick history about me. Yeah, okay, you hear me now, okay. So, um, I'm a founder of Slovenian Go6 Institute. Uh, that we worked on IPv6 for many years. Um, I worked in internet operations for 20 plus years. I have some experience on IPv6 and I'm an active and contributing member to the RIPE and IETF community. Um, maybe some of you uh, heard about RIPE 501, RIPE 554. Um, I had a speech at the last PLNOC about that. That's the IPv6 procurement BCP document. And I'm also the co-author of RFC 6346. That's A plus B approach to the V4 depletion. And I joined the Internet Society in December 2012. And I'm, I'm excited about my new um, mission and tasks that we are to perform. So, um, quickly about the, the, the Deploy360 program. Uh, we are trying to put on the web portal. We are putting it on. Uh, about the DNSSEC, IPv6, and now we added the routing section. Um, we are, we are uh, putting there the... Um, deployment oriented material and documents to help you, the operators, to deploy IPv6, DNSSEC, DNSSEC and routing more, uh, routing security actually, RPKI and this stuff more easily. Um, so, um, what, what is the challenge that we are trying to, to uh, um, uh, address at Deploy360? Uh, the ITF creates protocols based on open standards but um, some of them, or, 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 well, some of them are not widely known or deployed. We are trying to, to put that knowledge uh, up and uh, to, to, to the operators so they, are, they can understand what to use when they are deploying the new technologies. <coughs> we, also, um, we, we also like to provide the hands-on information uh, to, um, to advance the uh, real-world deployment. And we, we, we'd we like to, to think that we work with technology experts to create uh, technical resources and openly distribute them um, around um, the, the globe. So what are our next areas of work? Um, we are trying to set up two different processes. One is how to improve the operational feedback to the ITF. You guys are mainly operators. And there is a gap between the operators and the IETF. Um, why? We are, we are trying to understand that. Why there is such a big gap between the operators and IETF. Why you guys don't go to the IETF. Um, and I'm here in a questioning mode. So I would like to hear back from you why this is happening and how can we help to improve this feedback. Um, the second thing that we are working on is the BCLP. That's Best Current Operational Practices Global Repository that we are trying to set up. So um, these areas are related, but are being approached as separate um, areas of work. So. Um, why am I talking about these two areas at the same time? Because I truly believe they can and may be addressed with the same tools. Right. So let's go with the with the uh, operator feedback into the ITF first. So what is the ITF? ITF is the standards body uh, that is uh, the organized uh, activity of Internet Society. So the ITF standardizes the protocols and services that vendor implements and internet operators are supposed to deploy and use. So um, we have observed the opportunity to increase the communication between operators and the ITF. Why? Because um, standards could be better designed if there would be more operational engagement while doing the standards, right? Um, because you guys, you use these uh, protocols, you use these technologies in real world, and you know what works and what does not work. 
and you could give give back to the ITF to the process valuable information what to change and basically also what not to do in in the future uh, standards so um, what we are observing is that uh, usually lack of manpower um, and time to tackle the daily issues in the NARC prevents the operators to send their staff to the ITF um, meetings. And also, you highly rely on the vendors. So what vendors offers to you? You buy. If you have a problem, you talk to vendors, and vendors go to the ITF. Right? So there is a proxy in between. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but that looks like that's the, the easiest way for you. But the vendors does not always convey the message to the ITF like it was received back from you. Um, so there is a gap. So the operators, you guys, have long-standing and effective operator group process, like PLNOC. Wow one of the best NOCs around the world. And the ITF has also long-standing um, and effective standards-making process. That's that's different world, right? How many of you have ever been to the ITF? Wow, three hands, and I know all of you guys. <laughs> so we must respect both of these unique processes to move forward and improve the communications between between um, these two groups. So the process number two. Let me let me grab a bit of a bit of water. I mean, we love presentation. So. What is this, uh, the best current operational practice re repository all about? Um, usually, as you may know and, and um, uh, observe, the best current operational practices are shared between the operators in many different ways. Um, there are hallways, hallway conversations, there are operator group presentations, uh, there's email list, web forum threads. Uh, so, um, you guys talk to each other, and um, if you like to ask a question, I don't know, how did you deploy IPv6 at, at the ISP X? Um, then you, you receive an, an, an answer in the hallway or during, during the, the, the talk in the breaks. And this is not the organized way how to um, document that. So there is currently no quick and easy way for an operator to find and reference all of these best practices. Um, and there is also too much clutter. People publish everything um, because they can, because the internet is open space and everyone can publish whatever they want. And there may be a need for the organized, globally recognized document series that puts the best current operational practices online and make them available for um, for everyone. So, um, <clears throat> what the solution idea? Um, I did not want to come to a NOG like PL NOG saying, "We know you have a problem, and we know how 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 to solve it." Now, we are asking you. I'm asking you. Um, what would be the best way? how to solve this issue. There is one idea. We went around the world, we asked people about that, and at NANOC, they also created the BCOP working group. And this is, this is quite a good initiative. Um, so, um, yeah. So, let's create a discussion group inside the NOx. I don't know uh, if, if it's possible to create it here at PLNOC. I think this is called track 
or, or a discussion group or a working group or something like this, where this best current operational practice documents doc, uh, will start to happen. And the same group could be used for operators to communicate their needs back to the standards process, back to the IETF, right? And this BCOP process should be owned by the operators groups collectively around the globe. Um, what should be a discussion topics in a group like this? It should be the presentations from the operators that would document uh, what they are working on, uh, like, uh, I don't know, present, present their implementation of IPv6, DNSSEC, uh, RPKI, whatever. And then the presentation would just mean, okay, I'm willing to start writing a document about that. And if there is anyone in the room that can help me with this, uh, please come, come forward and we, we can talk and start the work. There can also be an open discussion of operators' need to ease the deployment of new technologies. So this is kind of putting back the information to the ITF folks. And the process should be owned by operators with content created by the operators for the other operators. And later, an additional purpose may be added in order to improve the um, operator's feedback to the ITF. So how, how is this idea, um, how, it, how, how, how it actually looks like? Um, there is a, you see, operators and the members of non-communities around the world should participate in a regional BCOP working groups or discussion groups or tracks or something like this. And also the guys from the IETF, like working group chairs, um, uh, ID authors, um, uh, I don't know, uh, whoever is interested in the o o operator's feedback could come to these meetings, could uh, be part of this working group or track or something like this and say in like five or 10 minutes, what's happening at the ITF informing the operators what's going on and getting the feedback. And the idea is to appoint one or two people from each regional BCOP and put it in the global BCOP committee that elects the best documents from the regions and promote them to a global level. And these are really the best of the best documents and then we can create a global BCOP repository and um, share it around the world. Where can internet society help? Of course up here. So um, we can facilitate the global BCOP committee, we can facilitate the global BCOP repository and also um, we can commit to work with different communities around the world, with the non-communities, to create the regional process, how to start this. And what would be the advantages of global BCOP? There would be a common understanding of best operational practices amongst the operators worldwide. And um, we, are, we are at war here, right? We have a helmet. So this is also a call to action, a call to arms. Probably you saw what was happening at Wicket in Dubai, ITU, when the governments are coming in. They want to try to start to reg regulate the internet. They want to um, bring their hands over the internet. They, they are trying to change the internet. They're trying to put it back into dark ages uh, of telecom thinking. They are trying to um, um, make the internet not uh, the, the packet switched, but circuit switched network again. So they will keep coming back. They're coming back again and again and again and again. Maybe we won the battle in Dubai. Another one is coming this year. Maybe we can w win another battle, but I don't know if we can win the war with the government. Um, so 
The documents created by the operators may prevent governments from creating and mandating their own operational practices document. So if you guys agree and put together something on the paper and document your current operational practice, when the governments will come and try to regulate something, we can point them and say, hey, we, ha we have this documented. If you need to mandate something, pick one of those and mandate, I don't know, for example, BCP 38 that's, that says about the, the, the ingress filtering. I don't know, mandate something that is in this document repository. If we don't do that, my friends, the governments will reinvent their own operational practice and enforce it, right? Um, so this is a call to arms. Um, and I have a question. Maybe, I don't know, uh, you think about it, you'll find me in the hallways. I'll, I'll be here both days and talk to me about that. But currently we have no preference where the global BCOP repository should reside. So should it be neutral, free format? We could start it under ISOC in Deploy360 and then move it elsewhere if needed. Should it be under the IETF as a new RFC series? Or should it be under IITF as a free format series? Or should it be somewhere else? So we are trying to understand how the NOGs and the operators would like this process to be done if you think there is um, a need for that. And we are going around the world now asking many NOC, big NOC communities how this should be done. And at the end of the year, based on what we heard from you guys around the world, we will prepare uh, the proposal how to start uh, all these things. So, um, I think for q and I need to put the helmet on. Are there any questions? Okay, no helmet needed. Thank you. <laughs>